Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Tips and Tricks. On today's show, Rebecca and Mikowai from Winona State are back to share more Zoom tips, this time from a pro user perspective. That's next on Tips and Tricks. Collider Tips and Tricks, sponsored by Collider Sustaining Sponsors. Thank you for your support of the Rochester entrepreneurial ecosystem and donors like you. Welcome to Tips and Tricks, your guide to staying productive and staying at home. I'm Jamie Sunsbach. In the previous show, we talked about five tips to get you started with Zoom. But for those people who have been using Zoom for the past few months or year, uh, you know, have you really learned to use Zoom as effectively as you could? I'm excited to be once again joined by Rebecca and Mikawai from Winona State University. Welcome. Uh, Hello. Hi. So uh, what are some pro tips uh, that power users of Zoom may not know? All right, so um, I'm gonna start off. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and share um, a presentation quickly. All right, so today we're gonna talk about five advanced Zoom features that can help with productivity using the application. But first, I wanna start off by saying, um, downloading the Zoom desktop client is very helpful. And as you can see, it has this nice, um, layout that's very easy to interact with. Um, we mentioned this in the basic Zoom features video. So if you are interested in downloading the desktop Zoom client, I would definitely reference that video. This is the chat window that you'll find in the desktop Zoom client. Um, if you joined Zoom with an organization, you'll be able to find your company contacts in the chat and easily communicate with them. This is the meetings tab. Um, as you can see under upcoming, you're gonna see all the upcoming meetings you have, um, especially um, if you merged this with Outlook, it's very easy to use once you have merged it. You'll see all the meetings there under upcoming. Um, we also talked about merging Outlook with the desktop client in the basic Zoom video. So if you would like to merge your calendar with the desktop client, reference the video there as well. This is the contacts tab. Um, you'll see here we have company contacts. This is if you joined Zoom with an organization um, and any other contacts you have will show up here as well. Um, another helpful setting um, we find is if you go to your initials up in the right hand corner of the screen, click settings, accessibility, and then check always show meeting control. All right, so my first tip for advanced features is the security features in Zoom. So right here, you're gonna see the security um, icon at the bottom of the Zoom screen. You're only going to see this feature if you are a host or co-host in the meeting. A lot of the features we're going to be talking about in the advanced um, Zoom tips have to do with features that you'll see as a host or co-host. Um, features such as polls and breakout rooms, which Miko will be talking about later. Um, so if you're a host and co-host or co-host, you will see you have the ability to lock the meeting, which prevents um, new participants from joining. You can also enable a waiting room, um, which will force participants to wait outside the meeting room until a host or co-host allows them to enter. Um, you can also uh, disable screen sharing, the chat, and participants renaming themselves. These are some security features you'll find while Zoom is running. Um, there are also other security features you can put in place uh, before you even start the Zoom meeting. For example, when you go to schedule a meeting, you can click, uh, select to have a password that participants will need to get into the meeting. You can also go into settings um, schedule meeting and you'll be able to only allow authenticated users to join the meeting. These are some helpful security features. The second tip I have it has to do with the participants window in Zoom. So as you can see the participants window is open here off to the right hand side. Miko is the host in this meeting. Miko um, is the host because he was the person who um, decided to call the meeting. Um, there's only one host in a meeting 
at once, and but there can be more than one co-host. Another feature that um, I think is helpful is the invite feature. Let's say you started a meeting um, and invited everyone, but then you forgot somebody that was meant to be joining the meeting. You can easily invite them while the meeting is going on. Or let's say you, you want to ask a question of someone and want, um, want to invite them to, this, to the discussion. You can just go ahead and invite um, them so they can come and answer a question and it's really easy to do from the participants window. Uh, another feature of the participants window that I'd like to highlight is the mute all and unmute all feature. Let's say you're in a meeting and there's background noise coming from one of the participants and you're not sure who it is. You can easily just mute all. Um, and you also have the function to unmute all. The way you know whether someone has been muted or not is by checking by their name you're going to see a little microphone icon and a video icon. If there is a red line through either of those, that means that the audio or the video is um, muted or they're not using the, the video. This is an example of a nice um, way to organize your screen. You can put the participants and the Zoom group chat window off to the right hand side so it's out of the way. Um, to do that for the group chat, all you have to do is click the three dots at the bottom right hand corner and click merge to meeting window and it'll put the Zoom group chat window off to the right hand side so it's less distracting. All right, and now Miko is going to take over and talk about breakout rooms. All right, I am very excited to give some pro tips um, for, you, uh, for Zoom users. And our tip number three is breakout rooms. So to me personally, it is an amazing tool for brainstorming and group discussions. For example, in our MIS classes where both Rebecca and I are teaching assistants, um, the professor is uh, giving a lecture. We are having one designated, um, designated teaching assistant uh, be in charge of the chat, like a facilitator, a chat window that Rebecca was going over in uh, previous tips. And whenever a student has a question, or is having some technology related issues uh, that designated teaching assistant um, would assign that student to another teaching assistant. And uh, then they would be moved to that breakout room. And over there, they can discuss uh, that issue or uh, that student's question privately, not affecting the lecture that the professor's, professor is giving. And then they can move back to the main session to the lecture. And let me show you what options need to be enabled to allow that. So in your account settings, you go to settings, you go to meeting advanced, and in meeting advanced, you have breakout room. So enable this option and this option, and that will do that. You can also pre-assign breakout rooms and pre-create them before you start a meeting. So if, for example, you do not want to be spending time on creating such breakout rooms when you're presenting. You can do it also uh, in the settings of your own personal meeting. Um, and let me show you of what it looks like actually trying to create those breakout rooms in Zoom while the meeting is going on. Uh, you have an option to um, assign automatically participants or manually. I love this option when there is a lot of participants uh, and that is just a random assignment um, to breakout rooms, however many you create, to facilitate such group discussions. Um, and then you hit create breakout rooms. I created two breakout rooms. You can always rename them, assign people here, and you have more options, such as um, if you changed your mind and you didn't want to automatically assign participants, um, you can, I mean, manually assign participants. You can then check this option here to um, ensure that they will be automatically assigned. And you can also uh, choose how long such breakout rooms should be active for and whether there should be um, a countdown time when the breakout rooms close so that all participants are being moved to the uh, main session. Also a very uh, useful feature here 
is uh, allowing participants to return to the main session at any time. Um, that is useful when you assign, let's say, all participants to go to different breakout rooms for brainstorming or discussing some topic. And you as the leader uh, of the meeting or a presenter uh, have something to talk about with a facilitator, for example, or an IT specialist, and you need to keep something private. So you would disable this option so nobody can come back from the breakout room um, until you specify so. And so just to recap about the breakout rooms, they're just an amazing feature, I think, to facilitate such group discussions and interactivity within the meeting. So another tip that I have is creating polls. And they're also great because they can increase interactivity as well in the meeting and get participants feedback and check in um, when you're presenting, for example, if the participants are following up with what you're presenting. The way to do so, you again have to go to your account settings in the browser and you would go to a meetings tab and down here you have a poll settings and you would add a poll. And here I'm creating a, an example of a poll, um, titling it using Zoom for a future reference if I want to be using it in the future for other meetings. And I ask a question and give uh, specific answers. I hit save and I get a confirmation that I have created uh, one poll for this meeting. And this is what it looks like when Rebecca and I were talking and I wanted to um, generate that poll. And so I hit over here, polling, and I launched this poll. And whenever, for example, you still can edit it whenever you see a typo, I would see a typo somewhere, I would hit edit and that would uh, still allow you to um, change anything last minute before launching it and that would direct you to a browser you can change it save it and then go back and then launch the poll and so this was Rebecca's answer for example um, for does zoom help her stay productive she said yes and what I also like about it is that uh, I did not like this answer of hers and I hoped she really would have chosen definitely that Zoom is helping her staying productive, not just yes. So I would not share those results. I would just relaunch the poll until she actually can answer, definitely. <laughs> but anyway, polls are also an amazing feature to help everybody stay um, interactive and um, get um, feedback from participants. So for tip number five, um, I am giving it off to Rebecca. She will mention uh, something about recording in Zoom. All right, thanks Miko. Um, so I'm gonna finish us off with our fifth and final tip, which has to do with recording in Zoom. So it's really easy to record um, from the Zoom application. All you have to do is go down to the bottom panel here and press record. It'll give you the option to record to your computer or record to the cloud. Um, when making the decision whether to either record to your computer or the cloud. Keep in mind that um, when you're recording to the, the, to the cloud, bandwidth might become an issue. Um, so just make sure you, you have bandwidth that's sufficient for recording. Um, when you start recording, you're gonna see this green border. Um, this is on a Mac laptop, so you might see a different colored border on a PC, for example. Um, but let's say you're using dual monitors, you're going to want to make sure that the border is around, going around the screen you want to be sharing um, that, that's going along with the audio in the recording. So just make sure when you start recording that you're seeing this border around the screen you want to be sharing. When you're recording, you can also pause if you need to take a break, for example. So you can go ahead and pause recording and you can also resume court recording again um, once you've taken your break and then you can, it'll pick up where you left off. All right, and those are our five um, advanced Zoom tips. Awesome, thank you so much. Uh, fantastic information, super valuable for users of Zoom, especially in the world we now find ourselves. Um, also a note for prospective employers in the area, they're both seniors. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, remind the audience in what fields of study? 
I am an MIS major at Winona State University. And I am a data science uh, major in, at, also at Winona State University. Fantastic. And I uh, thought we'd, uh, you know, we always ask people, how can we find you? And, and a lot of the social stuff, I think this is probably more useful to you at this point <laughs> um, in your career. So I wish you the best of luck and a uh, great job. And thank you both for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jamie, for having us. So my thanks to Rebecca and Mikawai for joining us today. Hopefully this series helped you learn just a bit more about Zoom. Do you have any questions or comments? Please comment or reply to this video or send us an email at hello at collider.mn. We would love to help you out. Just a reminder that we do this show twice a week here at collider.mn. If you're getting value from this show, please visit collider.mn and see how you can support the work we do to create a vibrant and healthy entrepreneurial ecosystem here in Rochester, Minnesota. Have a great day, everyone.